KLM's long-haul network depends on the A330 more than you think. Because despite the Netherlands' relatively small size as a country, their flag carrier serves a truly enormous number of destinations overseas, including some where they're the only carrier offering long-haul flights. We're actually taking the A330 to one such destination today, Edmonton, Alberta, but only for a brief stop as our flight continues on from there to Calgary, which will be our final destination. Before departure, the COVID tests and vaccination certificates of all Canada-bound passengers were checked once more before boarding. But since KLM only tasked five employees with that and the airline having four flights departing for Canada at the same time, this resulted in long queues and all flights being delayed by roughly 30 minutes. This also meant I wasn't able to shoot an introductory scene, which means you'll have to enjoy today's brutally honest episode without me in front of the camera. Our flight to Calgary, via Edmonton, will be operated by PH AKA, a 2012 built Airbus A330-300. The aircraft features the standard 242 configuration in economy, with my seat today being 35J. A blanket was already placed on every seat, however, pillows were nowhere to be found, which was seriously disappointing for a long haul flight. The legroom was quite impressive, however, partly due to the absence of in-flight and duty-free magazines in a seat back pocket due to the pandemic. Around half the seats had this utility box beneath them, which is there to support the in-flight entertainment system, but it does, however, reduce the space you have available for your legs. Each seat also features a standard tray table, as well as both a USB port and a universal power outlets, which are both highly appreciated. The remote control for the IFE and the audio port are both located on the inside of the armrest. A truly terrible choice, as your legs constantly press against the headphone jack and you sometimes end up accidentally turning on the overhead light with your hip. The seats also featured adjustable headrests, which do make the seats a lot more comfortable. The cabin was spotlessly clean, and despite the age of the seats, the cabin was in a fantastic shape. Definitely a good start into our transatlantic journey today. For your safety, make sure your carry-on luggage is stowed before taxi, takeoff, and landing. Small electronic devices may be used at all times, when set to airplane mode and secured in your hand or pocket. After make sure electronic devices are disconnected from the onboard power supply. We encourage everyone to read the safety onboard card located near your seat. At KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, we care about every little detail of your flight safety. If you have any questions, our cabin crew is here to help you. Thank you for your attention. On behalf of KLM Royal Dutch Airlines, we wish you a very pleasant flight.
What I also appreciate greatly is that right after takeoff, the crew immediately handed out bottled water, which is a very thoughtful gesture, alongside a refreshing towel and the headphones. Before lunch is served, let's take a quick look at the in-flight entertainment system. A large variety of movies and TV shows are available on demand, meaning that it's unlikely you'll get bored on this flight. Quite soon after takeoff, lunch was served. There was no service prior to that, like on some other airlines where you get a beverage and a small salty snack before the meal. Two choices were available for the main course, the standard chicken or pasta option, where I went with the chicken, which was served with oven roasted vegetables. Alongside that, KLM served a cabbage salad and some kind of vanilla cream with caramel crumble for dessert. Many other airlines also provide a bread roll and butter or cheese with the main meal, even KLM's sister airline Air France does so, so it was slightly disappointing that this was missing here on KLM. Overall, a very average meal service. It could have been a lot worse, especially because the quality was great and the dishes were delicious, but most European airlines do provide better meals than that. One of the highlights of many transatlantic flights is the view over Greenland. I mean, just look at this. Wi-Fi was available for purchase, but using standard messaging apps was actually free for one hour. In the rear galley, beverages and snacks were available throughout the flight, including granola bars and waffles. Before landing in Edmonton, the crew handed out these hot paninis filled with tomato sauce and mozzarella as a pre-landing snack. And having a hot snack in addition to the main meal service is always a plus on transatlantic flights. After that, it was time to start our descent into Edmonton. After landing, there was a discussion amongst the crew members whether those continuing on to Calgary had to leave the aircraft or not. And as it turned out, we did, and we needed to complete our immigration formalities here in Edmonton. To my surprise, we even had to pick up our luggage and recheck it onto the same flight we just arrived on. And then it was out through the exit and back airside through security control. While I totally get the rules and regulations around why we had to clear immigration and customs here in Edmonton as well as go through security again, it was all a pretty bothersome experience which ended up delaying our flight by over an hour because people took a lot longer than KLM expected them to.
Because of the delay, the crew handed out the snack and drink that were supposed to serve during the flight to Calgary before takeoff, which shows that KLM's crews are flexible and caring. And in general, I have to underline that KLM has some of the most consistently friendly and motivated crews in all of Europe, something I look forward to on every flight with them. I rarely comment on crews in my videos, but there's something about KLM's crews that makes them better than most airlines. So a very special thank you to everyone at KLM for your fantastic attitude all of the time. But now we're ready for our 35 minute flight down to Calgary. So the conclusion is very simple for me. A KLM flight doesn't come with everything you might expect. Pillows were missing, although as far as I could tell they were available upon request. The meal service could also come with some bread or cheese. The cabin could be more modern, but the things that you do get are excellent in quality. The meal was delicious, the cabin was in a fantastic state, the crew was phenomenal. So KLM, they're your typical it gets the job done every time kind of airline. Without much fuzz or glamour, you can be sure that a KLM flight is going to be just good. So with that, I want to thank you for coming along on today's journey. I hope you've enjoyed it and make sure to subscribe to our channel because we have many more episodes of Brutally Honest coming up. Next week, we will bring you along on Oman Air's Boeing 787, an airline which does offer a lot of fuzz and might as well be one of the Middle East's most underrated airlines. So I'm looking forward to seeing you again next week and until then, have a great time and safe travels.